Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today we've got a ton of really big stories, starting with new stats from Nvidia, massive GPU price drops, GPUs are dying due to SAG, AMD released two new GPUs, and they accidentally leaked their own Ryzen 8000 and 9000 CPUs. Okay, it's news time, but before I get to it really quickly, GamerMail just reached 300,000 subscribers, and all I can honestly say is thank you. It's been absolutely incredible. All of you who have watched, obviously I thank you so much. Those who have subscribed, it's just been a wild ride, and Honestly, I'm still shocked pretty much every single day of all of you that watch. I definitely can't thank you enough. If you are already subscribed, thank you. If you're not, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you love PC hardware news. And I definitely can't wait for the next 300,000 subscribers. Okay, with all of that said, moving on to the first story, NVIDIA recently revealed some interesting stats regarding ray tracing and DLSS following the launch of their RTX 4070. As you can see right down here, it says of 20 series gamers that turn ray tracing on, 37% of them do that. 20 series gamers, 26% turn on DLSS. But moving all the way to the 40 series, 83% of 40 series gamers turn ray tracing on, with 79% of those same 40 series gamers turn DLSS on. So this is obviously a really big stat. It shows that quite a bit of gamers, at least of their newest 4000 series cards, or turning ray tracing on and they definitely do like these new technologies. But of course, keep in mind that this only comes from those who were willing to take this little survey that they did. Plus, for those who aren't interested in ray tracing, they probably didn't want to move from the 20 series to the 40 series because they're happy with what they have. So you could kind of say that almost everyone who's going to be using ray tracing and DLSS are going to be on the 40 series cards, or at least, you know, the newest series of graphics cards, and given the vast majority of gamers are on older GPUs, this definitely doesn't mean all gamers, or likely even most of gamers, but at least of their 40 series cards, those who were willing to jump to the newest series of graphics cards, most are turning ray tracing on. And speaking of jumping on to the newer series of GPUs, some massive news right before the RTX 4070 series launched, and really, I'd argue this really shows the importance of competition in the market right before Nvidia released their 4070. AMD's flagship RX 6950 XT dropped massively in price, and obviously this is not a coincidence. You can see right here, and it is still on sale at this, the ASRock Phantom Gaming Radeon RX 6950 XT went on sale for $609.99, so just over that RTX 4070. Now obviously the RTX 4070 is Nvidia's newest series of GPUs, while the 6000 series is AMD's last gen products, but this is their highest in 6950 XT, and at least for rasterization, they are fairly comparable. And this is obviously a massive drop from where it was when the 6950 XT was first announced. You can see 629 then, well, it's really 609 because you have $20 off when you use this promo code. And the good news doesn't stop there because as you can see right here, the 6800 non-X model also recently dropped as low as $469.99. Honestly, a really good deal for this card. Not only that, but you do get a little extra with the deal, so a very good deal overall. And if you're interested in either of these, I will have affiliate links down in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Moving on, we have a very interesting story from Tom's Hardware, and as you can see right here, this originally comes from a German computer repair technician who also reported this on YouTube called ChrisFix. According to him, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti's are starting to get some issues caused at least from what he believes to be from GPU sagging. You can see right here that the technician demonstrated this with a damaged RTX 2080 Ti, showing how the bottom portion of GDDR6 memory modules can lose connection with its associated solder points on the PCB after several years of use under heavy GPU sag. Meaning due to the years of a fairly heavy GPU just sitting like this, it begins to sag and over time it actually pulls out 
the memory modules at least a little bit from the PCB and that effectively kills the GPU. Now he was in fact able to fix it. Yep, you can see it right here. He was able to fix it, but the major issue is still there. And of course this may make you think, oh, the 2080 Ti, well, that's not even that big. Well, at the time it sort of was, but compared to today with things like the 4090, it's not big at all, which definitely makes me concerned for those higher end newer GPUs. Now, the obvious fix for this would be to do things like have it vertically mounted or using like an anti sag bracket. But if you have one of those GPUs, as well as obviously a 2080 Ti, I would definitely do that very soon. Of course, this is something like four years later with heavy use throughout those four years before they finally started messing up. But we do know that a ton of gamers use much older GPUs. So kind of keep this in mind. I would certainly suggest vertical mounting your GPU or at least doing something to potentially prevent this in the future. And next up for today, AMD recently announced two very interesting new GPUs. Now these are Radeon Pro Series GPUs, so they are made for workstations. They aren't you know, for gamers or anything like that or consumers, but they definitely are interesting. Starting things off, as you can see, they're calling these the world's first pro chiplet GPU, and they're effectively based on the RDNA 3 process. You can see that they do have the same five nanometer graphics compute die and six nanometer memory cache die. So very similar to the 7000 series, and in fact, they're clearly based off of those GPUs. First off, we have the Pro W7900, where you can see it has the same 96 CUs as the 7900 XTX, as well as the same 61 teraflops of peak single precision performance. It also has AV1 encode and decode, it has a bit of a different um, total board power, but one thing you'll likely notice right off the bat is that it has double the memory. 48 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory with ECC. It doesn't show it here, but I will say that the memory is slightly slower than the 7900 XTX. I believe it's 18 versus 20, so definitely not much slower, but at least a little bit, yet it has double the amount. So clearly, getting a slightly slower memory is well worth it, especially when we're talking about a workstation GPU. Next up is the W7800, which is a little bit odd just because this one comes with 70 CUs, while the 7900 XT actually has more. I believe it's 86 CUs, but obviously they're wanting to differentiate these more than with their uh, consumer level graphics cards just because the market here is going to be quite a bit smaller. Here you can see that it gets 32 gigabytes of GDDR6 once again with ECC memory. Display port 2.1 which I'll get to in just a second. 45 teraflops of FP32 compute. 260 watt TBP. When it comes to performance compared to their last gen, you can see right here that in spec view they are showing 1.5 times performance from the W7900 versus the W6800. So certainly a pretty big jump over their last generation. Not only that, but you can see 1.5 times more memory than the W6800. Very good stuff for workstation cards. But one thing that is really interesting and actually is something that very much stands out when compared to Nvidia, you can see right here that it has DisplayPort 2.1. Now you might be thinking, well, the 7900 series has that as well, but not really. In fact, this has the full UHBR20, which means 80 gigabit per second speeds. Now this says 77.4, but that's just because of some of the overhead with it. It is 80, but what you can actually use is 77.4. Still a massive difference, even when compared to the 7000 series, because that one has, I believe it's UHBR 13.2, and that gets 52.2 gigabits per second. So quite a bit faster and once again, certainly something that would be very important for Pro Series GPUs. And moving on, we see the price and this is where AMD seriously comes in and pounces. First, we have the W7900, once again, 48 gigabytes of VRAM. I'll show you the score in just one second as far as uh, spec view perf. We have DisplayPort 2.1 while NVIDIA, I guess I didn't really mention this, but NVIDIA only has DisplayPort 1.4. Very big difference in capabilities of output. But 
The difference is that, say, the A6000 is significantly more at $4,860, and then the RTX 6000 ADA is over double the price versus the W7900. Now, with that said, at least in this benchmark, we can see the Spec View Perf 2020 versus the RTX A6000. They're claiming that the W7900 gets within 7% of the performance. So within 7%, yet over double the price. So definitely when we're talking price to performance, AMD really kicked it out of the park here. Obviously they aren't going for the absolute best of the best, but at this kind of pricing, it is very impressive. And lastly for today, it looks like AMD may have made a really big boo-boo, at least one of their engineers. As you can see right here, this actually comes from supposedly one of AMD's engineers named well, this person, MD Zahir. Okay, not that hard. I think I pronounced that right. But either way, it looks like they are a senior silicon design engineer at AMD that's worked on power management aspects of Zen 4, Zen 5, and Zen 6. And what they shared is a pretty big deal. You can see right here that they showed Zen 6, which is apparently called Morpheus, is based on two nanometer process. Now, Morpheus is for their server series of CPUs, but obviously Zen 6 is also gonna be what the Ryzen 9000 series of CPUs would be based on, given they continue with this you know, it'd be Zen 5 would be Ryzen 8000, then Zen 6 would be Ryzen 9000. So they should both be based on two nanometers. Not only that, but Zen 5, apparently called Nirvana, which once again is the codename for servers, is based on three nanometers. Obviously, these are almost certainly coming from TSMC, but once again, Zen 5 would be Ryzen 8000. So AMD effectively just gave us some information on both Ryzen 8000 and Ryzen 9000 CPUs. Now, this person has since changed this in their LinkedIn, but of course you can see this is a Twitter post, not before someone found it and shared it. So basically a really big drop, especially since Zen 6 isn't in any of AMD's roadmaps. So really interesting to see what AMD is doing in their future. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen CPUs, or what about those new GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And once again, thanks for 300,000 subs, and as always, have a great day!